Hi, I'm Jesse Anderson from the Northern Nevada Software Developers Group. Go to www.softwaredevelopersgroup.com for more information about the website. And today I'm going to be talking about a guide to pitching Agile. You may have been reading about Agile in the news or on tech sites, and you want to figure out how you can pitch your organization on how to how you want them to go to Agile. And so we'll talk a little bit about what you need to do to accomplish that. One of the biggest things you need to do is to get a buy-in. Because that buy-in is important for success. And if you don't get everybody's buy-in, it will still work, but it'll be a lot more difficult. And there's usually this will be a bottom-up exercise. I found that it's usually the developers and middle management, the management that's actually de dealing with the developers as being the ones who spearhead this effort. This usually is the CEO saying, I just read about Agile and everybody do it. So it's a little bit different in how you pitch it. You want to garner people, you want to get people to buy in to using Agile. And you want to do that in a way that appeals to that person in their role. So different people have different roles. And we'll also talk a little bit about how I personally did it at one of my previous companies. At one of my previous companies, I actually implemented Agile. And they were doing a straight waterfall design before and had all the problems of, of waterfall, which I aim to fix using Agile. So let's go through a list of people or types of people that we want to get buy-ins from. So you have the C-list. That would be your CEOs, your CTOs, that sort of thing. Upper management, in some cases in certain companies, upper management and the C-list will be one and the same because they're not big enough to have that differentiation. You also have middle management. At the time when I implemented Agile, I would be here in middle management. I was trying, to, I had the developers underneath me and I had the CEO upper management above me. And I saw the problems of the waterfall approach and we'll talk about those a little bit more later. And I decided that I was going to pitch it around, try to get those buy-ins, and then get people to actually buy, uh, and then actually implement Agile there. And there's sales. Sales might sound kind of like a weird uh, thing, uh, a weird people person to pitch to, but it's actually one of your biggest supporters. They can be one of your biggest supporters. And it's a funny thing where uh, that motivation, that drive that salespeople have to get products out there, you can turn that drive towards them talking to the CEO, them talking to other people about Agile, them pitching Agile for you. And they can be very motivating and really motivated to do it. And we'll talk about the ways in which salespeople can, are motivated to want Agile support. Oftentimes, these are the guys who are dealing with the problems of waterfall. They're dealing with the lag time between development and, and, and a problem. With Agile, we aim to minimize that, that time. QA. QA is often dealing with problems that during the course of a waterfall where you have years, let's say months, long projects. QA doesn't get that till the very end very often in waterfall. But with Agile, we're going to get them deliverable software, software that they can start testing very, very quickly so that they can feel involved in the process and we're not waiting till the very end of a waterfall project to actually get uh, to get the bugs fixed, and they'll they'll appreciate that very much. And then there's the developers. My personal experience has been that developers are one of the more difficult ones to get buy-ins from, and and it's more rooted in the fact that they've heard heard a lot about silver bullets in the past, that methodology that's going to solve all their problems, and. Unfortunately, that's the way Agile is often pitched. It's that silver bullet that's going to work in every single case. And I'm not up here to say Agile is that silver bullet, but for many, many cases, Agile is a very good way to get software out that's good, that's manageable, and that if you can, if you can get developers to buy into that, it will be a lot more, a lot easier to, to uh, implement Agile. So, when we're talking about the C-list, what motivates the C-list? 
more often than not, they're caring about their shareholders. They're there to create value for the company. They're there to increase the company's wealth, increase profits, that sort of thing. They, they care about the bottom line. They want to make more money. They want the people that are there to make them more money. How does Agile do this? Agile will make a better product faster. So when you're talking to the C CEO or the CTO, that's what you would say. Agile will help us to make a better product in a shorter amount of time. And, and we keep on comparing this to an Agile, uh, to a waterfall world, which is what I was coming from at that previous company. I was trying to get my upper management to realize that we had a problem. We had a very definite problem, problem with our waterfall approach of getting software out the door. We, um, sometimes it was taking months to get a product out the door. And as a result, that wasn't just getting stuck in a loop of developer and, and support. That was actually reaching the CEO, where the CEO was getting called from angry customers saying, why isn't the software out there? And so we're doing that Talking about a better product faster means that they get called less. They have happier customers. They're getting calls from happy customers telling them, I like your product. And one of the big things, if you have a lot of people um, not working due to, uh, they're waiting for requirements from, at, from Waterfall, that means that that time is wasted. So we want to create, make, our, make more money. We want more productive developers because we're not waiting around for things. We're not waiting several months for a design document to come out. We're working uh, continuously on that. Upper management. Upper management, as I mentioned before, they're thinking about strategy. They're seeing, they're looking at the entire field of the business, of the industry that they're in, and they're trying to strategize. They're trying to figure out What's that next big thing? And how can they move the company in such a way that they accomplish that goal of getting that next big thing? And they also think about long-term goals. They're not so much thinking about this iteration of the software. They're thinking about in a year, in five years, where can the software be? Where should this company be positioning itself? And they're very concerned about roadmaps. And roadmaps are often difficult to, to maintain because you're saying in Q1, in Q4, such and such is going to happen. But very often there's slippage of that because we're dealing with, a, oftentimes we were dealing with a, with a, uh, a waterfall approach of we didn't know what we knew at the beginning and we kept on slipping because we, we weren't doing things, the hard things up, first, up front, which Agile stresses. So what would Agile do to help out upper management? How would you pitch it to, to upper management? It will allow you to make easier strategic changes. Uh, what that means is if you're seeing the in industry going along like this and this revolutionary new product is going to come out, with Agile, you can change easier. That's not to say that the, that, that change will be automatic or it will be without any, any kind of problems, but you will be able to do make that change quicker. So that new product comes out and you, and it, let's say you were doing waterfall, and this actually happened several times. You've got a year's worth of work planned do you throw that year of work away? Do you throw that nine months of work away? Because now you have to do that zig and zag because the industry has come up with something new. This is one of the reasons, this is one of the big deals about Agile that you can make changes easier. You can stick to a schedule. Um, it's, it's very interesting that Agile will release at a certain time. The difference during that time will be the features inside of it. You will have a stable, releasable thing, in, at least in Scrum, every iteration. You may not release that at that time, but you will have some stable software that's ready to go, that's been tested. It meets the business needs. So oftentimes, especially with Waterfall, 
you are dealing with business people or you're dealing with another company, that other company may not know what they need to know to say, I need this. They may not, they may think it's, it's inherent to the problem or they may not have ever dealt with software before. So they're going to either not know to say that. So what happens it, oftentimes in waterfall is a year later, what comes out is not what they wanted. It was something different, slightly different, sometimes a big difference. But how do you mitigate that difference? You mitigate that by giving them releasable software sooner. So after a month, the software may not be ready, but you're actually, you could actually send it to that person and say, here's what we have so far. It's rough around the edges, it's got this and this problem, but this is the way we're going. And that person, that customer, will be able to look at it and say, yes, this is what I wanted, or no, this is not what I wanted. And he could tell you, you're, in, you're doing an iterative process to try and make the software meet the business needs as closely as possible. So middle management. I can speak on, on this well because I was at that point when I implemented Agile. I, I wanted to know what was going on day to day, but I didn't want to interrupt everybody to do that. Uh, if you don't have a, a good way to do that, you're distracting developers a lot. And that's the, the thing that I see as one of the killers of productivity, is distracting developers. If you, the context switching of getting Interrupted and getting back to work can be a lot, especially when they're coding very hard. So when you have a, in the example of Scrum, you have a daily meeting. That daily meeting, that daily stand-up meeting, will tell you what's going on during that day. And that's very important because there's three questions that you answer during a, a daily Scrum meeting. What did you do yesterday? What will you do today? And is there anything blocking you? And that's really gold to a person in, in middle management because is that person actually on track? You can tell by that daily meeting, is your product, is, your, is that um, feature, is that person uh, staying up to task? Are, are they repeating the same thing? And it also aids the rest of the group of knowing that that person may not be doing that. And when they say, uh, the, one of the best things is that person will be able to say, I'm being blocked by this or that. That person, that may be another developer, that developer is right there in that, in that scrum, and the two of them, possibly the manager, can say, let's set up a meeting, let's do whatever we need to unblock you. The manager knows, the manager can prioritize based on what the product, the feature is, the thing that they're working on to say, this particular thing is being blocked, what can I do about it? So, what's going on? You have that daily meeting. You know what's going on. You know what's going on. Uh, you have things like uh, burn down charts. Is this product, is this project going according to plan for this iteration? So you, you can actually see the burn down chart. You can see the items being done in a, in a coordinated fashion. What is being done? You know exactly what is being done. You can see, you, you can see in those meetings, is this product, is this feature going to be released on time? So you've got those daily scrums. You're getting those daily updates. This is, as I mentioned, this is gold for people who are trying to do the day-to-day -day tasks of management. They need to know what's going on. And in my case, this actually helped a lot. This told me, is somebody not doing their job? Is somebody not able to do their job? And, and that was often the case. That person was unable to do that job. And you could tell using those, those, those scrum meetings, those daily scrum meetings, those daily stand-ups, what was going on. You've got those burn down charts. You can see, is, is it one day before release time and everything and nothing's been done, you should be seeing a gradual decrease in tasks during that burn down. Create project momentum. 